How's it going everybody? Jay here from Dan and Jay and welcome back to Tales of Ashes Friends, episode 2 of Ken Brock's team from the anime series Beat Pokemon Leaf Green. In the last episode, Brock set off on his Pokemon journey for the first time from Pallet Town with his trusty partner Onyx. Soon after, they met their second family member Geodette and together they headed towards Pallet Town to fight the first gym leader. It was a long battle with our evil twin brother Brock, but we eventually defeated him and took the Boulder Badge, the first step of the Indigo Plateau of Pokemon League. If you haven't seen episode 1, click on the video card right on the screen or check the description below for a link to the playlist containing all the episodes of this series. Our adventure today starts in Pewter City. Before continuing east towards Cerulean City, we go to the Mart to stock up for the journey ahead buying some potions, stat healers, scape ropes, and repels. We also get our running shoes from one of Professor Oak's assistants, which is great because for whatever reason, Brock is incapable of moving more than one mile per hour unless he has these specific shoes on. We move through Route 3 and defeat the crowd of trainers scattered throughout the area. I try to give Geodet a shot at battling, but the fact that she can only use tackle makes it difficult for her to get through a fight. I give up on using her until she learns a better move and clear the area no problem with just Onyx. In the anime, Ash and his friends run into Seymour the scientist at the foot of Mount Moon. He's being attacked by a swarm of Zubat but before helping him out, Ash takes some time to scan the Zubat into his Pokedex. Wow Ash, what a guy. After Misty finally lectures him, Ash tells Pikachu to use Thundershock and sends the Zubats back into the cave. Later in the episode, while battling Team Rocket in Mount Moon, Brock sends out Zubat to Ash's surprise and says that he caught one right before they entered the cave. Ash complains that he should have caught one also. While well, Ash, if you hadn't been so busy scanning them into your Pokedex, maybe you would have had time to catch one too. With that being said, we now add Zubat as a usable member of our team. Here is a list of the moves that Zubat has been shown to have in the anime series. Since Sonic Boom can't be learned in game, Zubat only has one attacking move. Outside of Mount Moon, we go up to the Move Tutor to finally teach G Dude another usable move, Mega Punch. Although it's not the most accurate attack, it'll be nice to have an attacking move other than Tackle and Geodet can finally start pulling her own weight. We finally arrive at Cerulean City and we go and heal before going back to train our team. After days of training, we get our team to the following levels. Zubat is at level 21 and Onyx and Geodude are at level 20. These levels we continue to move north towards Nugget Bridge to fight our rival again. He leads with Pidgeotto and I lead with Zubat. I go for the supersonic strat but my attack misses and Pidgeotto starts sand attacking away. After a couple of turns I eventually manage to land a supersonic but I quickly realize soon after that I should have just sent out Onyx to take care of Pidgeotto. I switch into Onyx and with the help of Pidgeotto hurting itself I quickly take him down with one rock throw. He sends out Bulbasaur next and I go for a bind strategy but miss and get one hit KO'd by Vine Whip. I send a Zubat back out who I thought takes care of Bulbasaur but he has 1 HP left after taking a wing attack. What? Whatever, his next attack misses and I finish him off. Abra is next but since it's such a glass tank I take him down with one wing attack. Lastly, he sends out his final team member Rattata, who's the only one that manages to damage Zubat with a tackle and quick attack. He eventually goes down to two wing attacks, earning me another win with my rival Ash. Feeling some confidence after that rival fight, I decide that I may be ready for the next gym, so I heal up and head straight there. In the anime, when Ash arrives at Cerulean City Gym, he walks into a show that Misty's three sisters are performing. He later meets them after the show asking for a battle, but the sisters refused because they had just lost three times in a row to kids from Pallet Town. One of the sisters is ready to just give Ash a badge, but Misty intervenes and battles Ash. 
Unfortunately for us, getting to Misty isn't as simple and we have to take down two trainers before we can battle Misty. Zubat is unable to beat the first trainer on his own, so Geodet goes out to finish the job with a Mega Punch to Shelter. The next trainer only has a level 19 Goldeen and goes down fairly easily to Zubat with a Supersonic and a few wing attacks. Next up, we finally have Misty, but before we start our battle, let's take a look back at Ash's battle in the anime series. When Ash and Misty start their battle, Ash actually tries to send Pikachu out first, but he refuses to fight because he didn't want to fight a friend. I guess Pikachu was just as ignorant as his trainer. Since Pikachu refused to battle, Ash sends out Butterfree instead. At first, you'd think Butterfree had the upper hand as he continued to dodge Staryu's water gun attacks, but he goes down when Staryu tackles him into the water and Ash calls him back before he drowns. He sends out Pidgeotto next and Misty sends out Starmie. Misty continues to go for the tackle strategy but Pidgeotto sends Starmie flying back with a gust attack. Before we can see the end of this battle, however, Team Rocket barges in and stops the fight. Like in the anime series, Misty sends out Staryu first and I send out Zubat. I go for the supersonic cheese hoping for Staryu to hit itself but manages to get a water pulse in and confuses me also. I use wing attack since it's my only attacking move and it takes almost half its HP. Staryu hits itself in the next turn bringing down its HP low enough for my next wing attack to take care of it. She sends out Starmie next and I try to use Supersonic but Starmie's Water Pulse takes most of my remaining HP and I hit myself on the next turn and Zubat goes down. Onyx and Geodet are both 4 times weak to Water type so I pretty much lost the battle at this point. Onyx goes down to 1 Water Pulse and Geodet also goes down to 1 Water Pulse and I white out. I try the battle one more time hoping for better RNG and hoping that I can beat Misty if I don't get confused by Water Pulse, but I had no luck and I lose the battle again. After my battle with this bug catcher, Zubat gains enough experience and grows to level 23 and I decide that I should try the gym one more time. For the third attempt, let's just watch a montage of my failure. And with that failed attempt, we continue north to Route 24 and 25 and clear the trainers in that area. While we do this, let's continue watching what happened with Ash's battle in the anime. Team Rocket breaches the gym and uses the big vacuum and hose they stole earlier in the episode to try and steal Pokemon. But when Pikachu falls in, Ash tells him to use Thunderbolt and electrocutes them. At the end of the episode, Misty's sister awards Ash the Cascade Badge for saving them and their Pokemon. Misty objects at first, but her sister said that if Pikachu had gone out to battle against her water type, she wouldn't have stood a chance anyway. So basically, Ash earns his second badge without actually winning a gym battle. Gosh, I'm really starting to wonder if Ash ever really earned his badges. By the time we reach the end of the street, Zubat has grown to level 25. We go to the house at the end of the street and talk to Bill and get my ticket to SSN before heading back to Cerulean City to try the gym one more time. For some reason, I thought it would be a great idea to lead with Geodet in this battle, but that was a huge mistake. Plus, I used self-destruct by accident which isn't even a usable move but it didn't matter because Geodet gets taken down very easily with one water pulse. I send out Zubat next but even at level 25, I get the same results as my last battle and I end up losing the fight one more time. I train up to level 28 and try again but this time I forgo the supersonic at the beginning and go straight for a wing attack. I'm able to take Staryu down with one hit. Starmie comes out next and it lands a water pulse taking a third of my HP. I go for supersonic hoping the confusion hacks help me a little but Starmie is able to attack and lands a critical hit on my Zubat taking him out. The rest is history again. I try again one more time hoping for better RNG and hoping that maybe I can take down Misty if Starmie doesn't land a critical hit but I was wrong and I end up losing the match again. 
I train up to level 29 and run back to the gym in tears hoping that this is finally the time that I win because I'm actually getting sick and tired of training. Lucky try number 7 question mark? You guys should know my strategy at this point. I go for a wing attack which takes down Staryu in one turn and Starmie goes out next. He uses water pulse taking a third of my HP and I counteract with supersonic. It doesn't hit itself on its next turn and it uses Water Pulse, taking me down to just 13 HP. In the next turn, Starmie finally hits itself and I can start wing attacking away, hoping for the best. I bring Starmie to Super Potion range and Mystery restores its HP back to full. I thought I was screwed, but thanks to the RNG gods and Lady Lucky try number 7, Starmie hits itself two turns in a row and with my wing attacks, I finally take Starmie down and take home the Cascade badge. They have taken us seven tries, but we finally won the second badge fair and square. And that is the end of the second episode. Tune in next week for our adventures in SSN and our battle against the third gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like and comment down below to let me know how you think Brock is doing so far. With that, this is Jay from Dan and Jay and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.